In this video, I'm going to talk about how to have a successful semester in two aspects. So academically, how to get good grades and also just how to make the best out of a semester as a medical student in China. So let's get into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Martina. I am a new doctor here in Nigeria. I graduated from a medical university in China. And from my experiences, I want to share with you guys how to have a successful semester as a medical student in China. So let us start with having a successful semester academically and getting good grades. First of all, when the semester starts or whenever you get to watch this video at whatever point in the semester, I would say reach out to seniors of the semester that you're in. So maybe you're in first year, maybe first year, second semester, and you just got into that semester, reach out to students in the second year, first semester and ask them, how was last semester? What courses did you do? What subject did you think was the most difficult? What subject do you think I need to focus more attention on? Also ask them, how were, how were your exams? What type of questions came out in the exams? Please show me what important things I need to focus on for the exams. Feel free to reach out to your seniors and ask questions about the semester that you're starting. This is going to help, help you a lot and it's going to guide you through that semester. The second thing is that you set goals for that semester, academic goals. So when you know the subjects you're having for that semester, you need to know what score you want to get in that semester. Do you want 90s? Do you want 80s? Do you want 60s? In China, the pass mark is 60. So you need to know what you want and you need to be able to work for it. Someone that just wants 60 doesn't need to put as much effort as someone that just wants 90, sorry, as someone that wants 90s and this may sound very surprising to you but I know people that just want 60 just want to pass the exam and they're not interested in getting high scores yes people like that exist so it depends on you what type of score do you want and then you set the goal for different subjects and then you can know how you work towards getting that particular score number three which is very very important and it's very common advice and that is start studying early yes the semester started and maybe your exam is in like two months time or seven weeks time and you're just so relaxed at the beginning of the semester that is not a good sign i will advise you to start studying as soon as possible as early as possible if you can start studying from day one as your teacher is going through different topics, also go through and review those topics with him. You will notice that when it's time for the exam, you don't have as much workload as you will have if you just waited for before the exam. And you'll be able to cover more topics, you'll be able to understand more because you just you have done most of the topics before as the, as the teacher was going. So when it's time for your exams, you are just reviewing and you're just, and you're just going through topics and not trying to learn information afresh. So it is very important that you start studying as early as possible. Do not take this for granted. Even though you think you can pass your exams, even if you just study a day before, still start studying as early as possible. And you will notice the difference in your exam studying. You will notice how stress-free it will be and how easy it is going to be for you to pass your exams. Number four, attend classes. So there are two reasons you need to attend classes one is for you to learn and take notes so in china most of the lecturers always tell you what is most important when they are teaching they can also tell you what is most important for your medical knowledge what is most important for your exams and this is very important sometimes a teacher might be teaching and it's like take note of this or this is very important and you need to be there to write it down you need to be in class in person to take notes on what is going on this is something that really really helped me i usually print out my pptes like the teacher's lecture slides and i have it in class or i have it on my laptop or my ipad and when the teacher is teaching and explaining i am writing directly on the page that the teacher is in so maybe we're on a particular topic and the teacher is like oh this is important you need to know this i write on that particular page on that particular area and i write this is important and i also take notes on my ppt slides directly so when i want to read i have both my notes 
and the teacher's notes all on the same slides. So this is going to be very, very helpful for you. It's going to reduce your exam studying workload because you already know what is most important. Now, the second reason why you need to go to class is because of attendance. Yes, in China, attendance is taken very seriously and you can also get marks for attendance. Maybe you don't do so well in your exams, but you still have like 10 marks from your attendance. So attendance is very important. Take it seriously. If you cannot be in class, just try to get excused and let your teacher know that oh, you cannot be in class because attendance is very, very important. Number five, do a lot of practice questions and reviews. So when your exams are coming close, you need to do questions and questions. After you've been studying from the beginning of the semester, at this point, you should be able to answer questions on your exam. You should be able to convert your PPTs into questions and be able to answer questions from your head. This is going to be very important and it's going to help you with your exam studying. So reviews, questions, everything you can get your hands on. Everything you have asked your seniors about the previous semester, now you need to review it all. The next thing, you need to improve your Chinese. In every semester that you're in, try to improve your Chinese. Make sure your Chinese is getting better and better. The first two years, you have Chinese as a course, so that is important to pass that exam. But also, as a medical student, you need to improve your Chinese because you'll need it in the hospital. Also, experiment classes are very important. Experiment classes also have marks. Hospital classes also have scores. So going to experiment classes is going to give you extra scores. A lot of times, a lot of students don't like going for experiment classes. And then the teacher can say, oh, there are so few students in class. Write all your names. I want to know who you are. I want to know who is not here. So it's very good to go to experiment classes and try to get all the little marks as possible. As, and try to get as much marks as possible from attendance, class participation, and experiment classes. These are just free marks that you can do by just going to class, being present, and participating. Now let's talk about how to make the best of the semester, how to have a good semester overall. Now the first thing I want to talk about is that you watch videos and you study outside your school giving resources. Especially at the beginning of the semester when exams are not so close. Start studying textbooks, international textbooks. Feel free to go to YouTube, watch Dr. Najib videos. Try to really understand because you have the time to really understand topics before exam period. So always look for extra resources apart from your school giving textbooks and study with those resources. Number two, you need to have a relationship with your teacher. You need to go to class. Your teacher should know you. You should answer questions. Ensure that your teacher knows your name. Ensure that you have and maintain a relationship with your teacher. In China, this is very, very important because these teachers can just... Sometimes they have the liberty to give you scores without you doing any exam or doing any class participation. For example, we have some open book courses and the teacher can just decide that, okay, based on what I've been noticing in class, this person should, should get a 90. Oh, I know this name. This person is always talking in class. This person is going to get a 100. And then she looks at your name and like, oh, who is this? I've never ever seen, I don't know you. So maybe let me just give you a 60 or maybe let me give you a 59. Chinese teachers can easily give you 59, especially for open book courses. So make sure your teacher knows you have a relationship with them. So when opportunities like that, where they can give you marks for class participation or for open book courses, they can easily give you 90 or 100 because they know you and they know that you are participating in class. If you are an intern doing your internship in China, speak Chinese. No matter how little, speak Chinese to your doctors, speak Chinese to the patients. Let your doctors know that you are trying to speak Chinese and you know a little. This will encourage them to teach you. This will encourage them to carry you along. Also, as an intern, don't just go to the hospital and just sit down because your doctor says, okay, just wait for me. Follow your doctors everywhere they are going to. Anything they are doing, ask them, what procedures do you have today? What patients do you have today? Try to follow up with your doctor. If your doctor just says, oh, sit down, wait for me, or go study, don't do that. Follow them up. Chinese doctors, oh, sorry, international students have this reputation of they are not so interested in going to the hospital because they feel like they don't understand Chinese. That's why it's important to speak Chinese. And also make your doctor know that you really want to learn. And you guys, if you're doing internship in China, it is so important that you go to the hospital early. Chinese doctors, Chinese people, they hate 
being late do not be late do not be late you need to go to the hospital very early because even if you go late you cannot go and tell your doctor oh what patients do you have today can we go do rounds again after rounds have been done they may not even pay attention to you you being late just shows how unserious you are and that is not a good reputation to have and you will have a very terrible internship experience the last thing I want to mention before I go is that you get involved in school extracurricular activities. So if you do not know, Chinese people and Chinese universities love extracurricular activities so much. Sometimes it even seems like they love it more than academic performance. So if you know how to sing, if you're athletic, you know how to do any type of sports, you know how to dance or anything, if you can speak Chinese, just get involved in school extracurricular activities so many times your school is going to reach out oh we need some people to run we're having sports meeting or oh we're having this show we need some people to dance or who knows how to sing we need someone to perform make sure you get involved in all these activities this can increase your chances of getting semester or yearly scholarships usually chinese universities give scholarships to students at the end of every in my university was every semester in some schools it can be every year so usually based on your academic performance you need to pass all your courses and then they pick the top six or eight students and then a certain amount of money is given to you so apart from your academic performance you also have scores that the university has about your extracurricular activities so that depends on the activities that you do for the school so you need to do enough activities they may not come and tell you oh if you do this will give you a scholarship or you know they won't tell you that so you just need to have at the back of your mind to take part in school activities and this is going to help you boost your reputation with the school and whenever there are opportunities or even chinese government scholarship your name will be put there but you need to be academically sound have excellent grades for these extracurricular activities to actually matter and if you're someone that is not so good academically you're struggling to pass then you need to also take part in extracurricular activities because this might actually boost you and create more opportunities and a good relationship with the school also if you are graduating and you also want to be part of the outstanding graduates in your university if you have a good reputation with the school about your extracurricular activities this will increase your chances so much because when you need to pick outstanding graduates apart from excellent academic performance you also need to have a very strong extracurricular activity um cv let me call it like that you have to have done a lot of things for the school so in china it's all about what can you do for me in order to get something from me so be ready to offer a lot of things to the school if you want favors from them but also just break off opportunities because you can also do things for them and they might still not decide to help you but it is to an advantage to you mostly an advantage to you so that is all for this video i hope this video helped you if you did please give it a thumbs up if you have more questions or things you would like to know please leave your questions in the comment section down below i'll be there reading your questions and answering your questions or i can make detailed videos like this answering whatever questions that you have if you know someone that this video will help please share this video with them and please 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 subscribe to my youtube channel click the subscribe button down below thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in my next video bye bye